Hello again. As I was walking my dog this morning, I was thinking about all the videos that I make chasing all of these energy lines across the Czech Republic, visiting all of these weird and wonderful places of historical, archaeological or spiritual interest along the way where these lines go and cross, and talking about the wonderful energies that the vortices of the lines crossing make. But I've never actually explained what an earth energy line is. So I thought I'd better put that right with this video. Uh, before I start though, I'd just like to ask for your support. Please do subscribe to the channel, do like and share my videos. It really helps me get to a broader audience and eventually might even help me fund some of these activities. So what on earth is an earth energy line anyway? So what is an earth energy line? It's a good question. I'm not even trying to know the answer. However, it is something that I and others, you included, can pick up using dowsing. It's also something that consistently can be found pretty much in the same place by dowsing. Once you have doused quite a lot and got used to the energy lines themselves, you actually don't even need the dowsing rods. I can feel them. I can feel the change in energy in parts of my body. I don't quite know where, maybe the back of the neck here, uh, sometimes in the pit of the stomach, but I can drive my car and I know that I'm approaching a major earth energy line. I feel it in my gut. The other thing about earth energy lines is that you can be walking through a forest and find a point on a line and you can not have any indication of where north is, completely lose your bearings, and pick up the same line multiple numbers of times, following a particular trajectory or azimuth. Meaning that this point that some people might argue is in your imagination, somehow happens to have an azimuth as well, which can be proven through dowsing. So it's not an imaginary thing at all. In fact, if you consult with dowsing experts, you will find out that there are certain types of grids and energy lines that are proven uh, physically and can be detectable. However, the kind of earth energy lines I'm interested in are those that currently are not necessarily detectable using any known scientific instrument, at least that I'm aware of. Rory Duff, a fellow geologist, by the way, has spent a lot of time researching in a scientific manner earth energy lines. Not only has he come up with a classification scheme for these lines, but he's also postulated some mechanism by which these earth energy lines exist. He has also measured the frequency of some of these lines. And what that means is, I've done this myself and I'll show you a a rudimentary graph I made of an energy line that I did this on a couple of years ago. But what it means is that as you go through the course of a 24 hour period or longer, if you measure the edge of the line as you detect it, it will move. It will move backwards and forwards in a frequency, maybe a 12 hour frequency, a 24 hour frequency or whatever. And what Rory and others, myself included, have come to find out is that on four occasions during the year, all of the line's frequencies synchronize so that they're all moving together. And this is a very special period indeed, but something that I'll go into in another video, probably. So what is an Earth energy line as I am detecting? I think that what they are is ultra low frequency sound waves that emanate from the Earth's and core. This is based on the work of Rory Duff and others, but I, I think he's on to the right, um, the right thing. It, it seems to me to be a plausible scientific explanation for the existence of these lines. I'm sure that if science was concerned about pushing the edge of the envelope into the non-physical pseudo-spiritual world, then what would happen is that they would come up with ways to measure these uh, lines and come up with instruments to do that. Now I started out mapping very small lines. They were only five, six, seven, eight meters across. 
Some of them were more like 15, 13 to, to 18 meters across. And as it turned out, these are like type one, type two lines, according to Rory Duff's um, terminology. And even those lines come in pairs. They, they tend to be straight, fairly straight. It's only when you get to the larger lines, the type fours, the 90, meet, the 90 pace wide lines and beyond, I think that you start to see all of this sort of sine wave business. And that's not true of every alignment, uh, which we'll come to in a minute. But what you see normally is a pair of lines and these lines travel more or less in parallel, although they may be wavy. And from time to time, they cross. And where they cross, there is usually a place of very special energies because an energy vortex is formed at the place that they cross. And where they cross is often where you find sites of significant interest, like a stone circle, a Templar cathedral, or maybe just a local church, a standing stone, or something along those lines. Now, as you follow the pair of lines along, you will find that they cross any number of times and on a distance frequency that varies. And when you plot the places that they cross, you will find that it's more or less a straight line within a kilometre or so anyway. And that straight line is the alignment. It's an alignment of sites of special interest, special spiritual, archaeological, or, or whatever interest because it's formed by the crossing of these two Earth energy lines. But this is where the negative, positive, male, female terminology comes from. When you find an, an alignment with a pair of energy lines, we are looking at lines that have polarities. It may well be that positive and negative male and female are completely inappropriate terminologies, but they're the ones that I tend to use. It doesn't mean one line is necessarily feminine and one line is masculine. But the funny thing is, is that when you track the positive and negative lines, they do tend to pass through locations that would be associated with feminine and masculine energies. So, for example, a negative line will often pass through wells, springs, lakes, schools, playgrounds for children, this kind of thing, check post offices for some reason. The positive lines will often pass through hilltops, places where there is an administrative center like a city hall or a village town hall, that kind of thing. And so you tend to sort of see that these lines have a, a feminine and a masculine kind of aspect to them. What I've also found is that quite often, for some reason, these negative lines, where they pass through a church, the church will actually be dedicated to a female saint. And where the positive line passes through a church, the church is actually dedicated to a male saint. And this, again, kind of gives you that sense of there's a polarity. And uh, that polarity I refer to as negative, positive, male, female. But who knows what that polarity really is? It's just a polarity. And where these poles come together and cross, there is a massive reaction. There's a vortex. There's a, uh, if these are sound lines, there is a um, basically a sound vibrational frequency. And when these two lines cross, what you will get is an interference pattern. And that interference pattern can give you strong energy. Now that energy can be um, negative or positive, I suppose, in a different sense. And this is where it gets a bit confusing. The energy can be perceived as not nice or very nice. So I hope that in this short but potentially laboured video, I've managed to explain what an earth energy line is, how you detect it, what male and female means, and what is the difference between an earth energy line and an alignment. And all you need to do is get out there with your dowsing rod and go find some. It's great fun and it takes you to places you would never imagine. Places of mystery, power and beauty. Try it.
It's fun.